I am Halle Caster Jane, and welcome to the Halle Caster Jane Show. We're along with my partner in politics, veteran White House correspondent Matthew Cooper. We slice and dice all things politics, and some days, Donald Trump, too. On this episode of the Halle Caster Jane Show, we begin with a discussion of presumptive Democratic Party presidential nominee Joe Biden's pick for his vice president, Senator Kamala Harris. Take a look at where the country is in the COVID-19 pandemic. Explore Trump's attempt to win re-election with his sabotage of the United States Post Office. And hey, what's a podcast without mention of Trump fixer Michael Cohn, his new book, and the infamous P-Tapes. And we're just beginning in our weekly take on all things politics. Oh boy, hang on to your umbrellas. Here we go. Welcome, my friends, and here's where we are this week. Hate to say it, but we've reached yet another milestone. Yes, a weekly event. There are more than 5.26 million cases of COVID in the United States. We still remain the holder of the award for the largest amount of cases in any country worldwide, more than 167,000 dead, over a hundred, over a thousand deaths a day. We're breaking records, Matt, day after day. We are above a thousand. This is like the beginning of the whole mess. Oh my God. One in what uh, Americans dying every 80 seconds. And yes, schools are opening here in Florida and around the country. And we're going to talk about that because There are a lot of stories that go along with that uh, nightmare. And remember Trump's response? It is what it is. Not to worry. This is just going to go away sooner rather than later. Except it's getting worse. And the scientists are warning us it's going to become devastating. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But you know what, Matt? We're going to do something we haven't done in a while. We're not going to start with coronavirus. We're going with the announcement of Joe Biden's nominee of California Senator Kamala Harris, biracial, his new running mate. So, Mr. Cooper, what do you think about that? Well, it's, uh, <laughs> um, this is a couple days, a few days after, so the reaction has settled in. Um, uh, well, look, I mean, I think it's, it's something that's united Democrats for the most part. There's a little bit of... Uh, dissension on the left but for the most part it's pretty popular in the party which is always one of the things you want with the nominee um he was obviously under considerable pressure to pick a uh, african-american or minority uh choice but mostly african-american so he's done that and um you know she she came out of the gate pretty well so you know i think so far it's uh you know it's a successful choice politically we'll see how she does during the campaign um in a possible debate with mike pence um and we'll see how their their relationship blooms but you know i think i think overall he's he's you know he's done himself well yeah you know i i kept going back to when they brought sarah palin out i don't know if i ever told you this but um it was a different time, of course, because it was pomp and circumstance and audience and, you know, there was the noise around it. And, you know, that makes it into this, you know, uh, production. This couldn't be a production because of the pandemic, obviously. But when they brought Sarah Palin out, I remember she was wearing a navy blue suit, which I thought, you know, um, I as a woman would have been a, the wrong choice for me. Um, but they brought her out to that wonderful music. It was like, you know, the Western kind of, you know. Boom, 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 theme. I was moved by it. Then she opened her mouth and she sounded like Judy Holiday in a movie, in a bad movie. But that being said, so there was none of that. But I thought that there was great dignity to it. And I love that. That's what it was. And there was also this quality of, and I don't want to know whether you picked it up, of her looking up at Joe with adoration almost like a, a, a girl looking at her mentor. Um, it, at another time, might have been a, inappropriate, but seemed appropriate because she put him on the pedestal he needed to get, he needs to be on. And he looked fatherly rather than old. 
he looked you know what I'm saying? It was a, it yeah, was, no, no, I get it. I yeah, get it, it I was. Think a, that's a good take. Yeah, yeah, it was a good moment. It really, really was, and and it was reassuring. God, and we right. Well, he sort of looks bigger because he chose someone who had taken a pretty good crack at him. Right. Okay. Yeah. There's that because I I argue that that's going to come back to haunt, and it is. Um. There. Well, sure. You I know mean, that's going to get brought up, but you know, compared to. Uh, Differences between LBJ and JFK or George H.W. Bush and Rick, and it's, you know. It was a good moment. It was, it's, I, not I'm, uncom- I'm, it's not uncommon when you pick someone who's run against you, but, you know. But that's a big thing that she said, and she's going to have to answer to it. Yeah. Sooner rather than later as to what no, she also, feels about him, yeah. you know. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, in the scheme of things, we're in such a different place now because of the pandemic that... You know, I just I just don't see that landing quite in the same way. Well, so far, nothing's landing quite in the same way. Um, interesting, they, have, they raised an enormous amount of money overnight. Like, didn't they break all records? Yeah. I mean, I, I just think there's a, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of excitement about the pick. Um, you know, I think African-American women clearly, you know, who are kind of, you know, in a lot of ways, the backbone of the party. Um can I say something yeah. that might piss people off, but I'm going to say it anyway, because when don't I say things that piss people yeah, off? Yeah. But I need to say this, and I did discuss it this week at great length, and I, I, was, inst- I was privately messaged about this issue quite a bit. And it, it, it's mm-hmm. something that people are feeling and they're not talking about in public. I shall bring it up. And that is a lot of people, I, I don't know anybody who didn't think she would be a good pick. She was at the top of the list. White, black, you know, Asian, anything. Right, sure. So that, so there were, we're, we're good on that. But what I was getting was they're not urging, the black women are not urging Biden to pick an African American or a woman of color. They're threatening him if he doesn't. And it really became a sub web topic. So I just thought I would throw that out because nobody else did. Whoops, what was that sound? But that that's just something that we needs to be addressed. And, and it's going to be interesting to see how they hammer Biden as this goes along over the next few months. Well, uh, uh, you know, t- there's Twitter and there's the real world, you know. But it wasn't just Twitter. Well, look, I mean, I mean, that my experience, my experience, I mean, I don't know, there were there were activists and politicians who really put the heat on him to pick an African American. I think, you know, his support, uh, you know, among the electorates, I think, pretty, pretty solid, as we saw the way he came back in the South Carolina primary. Um, So except for for where he is. Go ahead. Look, he had pressure. I don't think he had a gun to his head, you know. I do. See, I do. And I think that had he not chosen a person of color, that I think that, he would be dead. <laughs> well, I think there would have been disappointment. Um, I think they would have abandoned know, look, him. I mean, I, I think he, you know, I don't think he'd be getting killed if it was Duckworth. You know, I think it would be disappointment, but I think it's something he could have worked through. But in any event, this is what he did. Right. So this is a good thing. Let me ask you. I don't you think a... he looks weak because there was pressure. Uh, not yet. So it's just out there. I thought I'd just throw it out there. Um, Trump doesn't know how to play it. He knew this Wouldn't was coming. Be. He, you know, he doesn't know whether he should be sexist, racist. <laughs> His response has been, you know, he's just throwing out the mud. I, I think it would have been a lot. He could have done. Uh, they knew it was going to either be her or or, uh, or Susan Rice, probably. So weren't they? They this they, they seemed he seemed unprepared, and he just seemed to go to his old trope. You know, let's play the race card. Let's play the this, and 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 we're going to talk about that in a second. But did you think that he handled her well? It well? I mean, no, hmm. no. They've just you know he just didn't really have a response other than say she's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Or mad woman, I can't remember what he said. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, she's she's too much of a cop. She's not enough of a cop. They they just didn't. You no, know, I think you're right. I don't think they've had a a good pushback. Yeah, and you would. It, it was coming. <laughs> they were warned. I, you no, know, they had yeah. plenty of plenty of time to figure this out. I I just don't. I don't get it. I mean, I 
well, I do get it. I mean, they don't know what they're doing. They don't yeah. Really have a, yeah. They don't really have a line of attack against Biden that's working. I mean, calling him senile is not working. No, and you know what's interesting? This morning, Julie Kelly, you know who she is? Uh, uh, report, yeah, she works for the Federalist, and uh, she wrote the first Here We Go article, Ukraine Not Going Away. <laughs> <laughs> now, so they got people at every end going, well, hit them on this, hit them on that, hit them on the right, other. Right, you know, right. Because, you know, whoa, what are we going to do? Nothing's working. The only way. But, you know, before we get into go further, I do want to bring up um, Kamala's husband because that, that's historic, too, on a number of levels. One is he'd be the first, uh, what, husband, <laughs> second second man. So what was that? Right. Yeah. Second man. Is that the, the phrase that we're using these well, days? Uh, second gentleman, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's nice. Um, he's an interesting guy. They haven't been married all that long. I was surprised. I thought they had been married longer. Um, but he has two kids from his first marriage, I guess. And, yeah, a few and years, yeah. she never had children. And She uh, never had children. That would, uh, I think, the first since Warren Harding, not too fat. Yeah. Which I find fascinating. Kids. He's Jewish. Uh, although Warren Harding may have had a kid, who knows? Um, <laughs> he is he is Jewish, and he's wealthy, and he's accomplished on his well. own. You know, yeah. they live in Brentwood. He's a successful attorney, right? Yeah. So um, I mean, yeah. So yeah. And he was the guy who got on stage with the meanest face I ever saw when that person, crazy person, got on stage uh, and and started to go after her. One of the things that they were holding, right? right. Yeah, very defensive of her. Yeah, um, I, nice. yeah. I think I think people. Like him, he had a little bit of a public persona during the primaries. I, you know, I think he'll, you know, I think he'll be an asset. So, you know, that's that's good for them. So, Matt, there were, Dan Rather made a point this morning. I saw that you 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 saw it too on Twitter about the difference between we keep calling it the birther movement, but why don't we call it what it is, the racism movement? To put it in my words, I think that's true. And here comes this whole racism thing again, and I'm I'm sick from this, and I'm sick about this, and I'm just sick that really what you this mean this this uh, uh, sort of crank uh, calling her questioning her citizenship. Yeah, here she goes. Here they go again. You know, they're right back to square one. Except it doesn't seem to be moving anybody in any direction um, this time. I think it's old. Hat. I think it's old too, but you know, you never know the degree to which it's kind of seeping in at, you know, right. I hear you. Subterranean levels, right? Um, or, or if there is that qu- silent uh, vote again out there of yeah. I mean, Trump amplified it yesterday, so it's um, you know, I, there's no there's no debate among legal scholars and experts. I mean, she's a citizen. <laughs> for sure, and, and entirely eligible to run for president. So the old the old go to for Trump is the birth of movement, sexism, right? Or, or we, I should say the old go to movement go to racism, go to sexism, and go to to liberalism. Yeah, well, liberalism is pretty legitimate. You know, that's a good one. I don't know I that don't she's know all I, that liberal. Well, she's not not. You know, she's not Bernie Sanders, but no, you know she no. came out for Medicare for all, and then until she backed away, from right? It. Yeah. And uh, look, he could just go back to sort of classic Republican. You know, they're taxers; they're going to raise your taxes. He's done a little of that. Oh, he did that today. Buried. Yeah, he's done. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, they're they're gonna they're gonna open the floodgates of immigration and you guns. Know, that's a fair. Yeah, guns. Uh, you know, and abortion. the deficit. You know, the, the, yeah, I don't know if he's got a lot of standing up. I mean, um, but they're trying. They are trying. Yeah, it's they been, try it. they, um, it's been seeping into the conversation. Yeah, and and guns and and then the military. Just, I don't know why they keep going by the scene. Now they should just say he's been a politician for fifty years. Well, they have that. That somebody tweeted that yesterday. Forty-eight to well, be specific. Well, there's always you know, somebody yeah. tweet something. Yeah, that I'm talking about with the press. So, what they're going to play it? Um, so, what's bad about that? By the way, see, that was the thing that when I saw that, I went, you know what? That kind of that's not such a bad thing. That tells you a couple of things. It tells you what staying power a guy like uh, Biden has. You know, he knows how to play it. He knows how to get people on his side because he endured all those years when other people couldn't and didn't. He's been through how many presidential races and he kept coming back. I mean, that's a strength that they play it right, that he's been in politics for as long as he has. And he still has a nice guy reputation. Oh, my God, in politics. 
Well, yeah, I mean, I think there are people who will respect it, but I think there's enough cynicism about the establishment and Congress and Washington, you know, which is what he's been for his adult life, that, um, you know, it'll, there's something to work with there. All I'm saying is they, they have things to work with to run a campaign against Biden and Harris. Well, but they keep going to the things that are ineffectual. You know, I keep getting back Maybe to Maybe I'll be proven wrong, but I don't think calling Biden senile and calling her crazy is No. Is the way for them to go. No, it's not. Not and particularly in these times. Um it's funny, uh before uh she was selected, his uh, uh, poll came out today that he's up he's surging actually at eleven nationally for all national polls are worth. But it's a, it, it says something. I'd be curious to see what happens in the next few days, what the polls look like with her on the ticket. Um, but but there's, there, there's the post office, Matt. This post office yes. thing has me shaking. It really does. Because for everything that he's done, which you can't really uh, define or prove this thing with Russia, no matter what Barr says with the Durham probe, um, he said it as clear as the nose on my face. I'm going to destroy the post office. and There will be no mail-in voting. By the way, while he and Melania just put in for mail-in <laughs> applications for Florida. Okay. But this, this, this is bad. And this concerns me the most of just about anything that he's done. And I know that's a pretty big, oh, my God, considering all that he's done. But I think this really is something... Um, that should have lawmakers and, and on both sides going, wait a second, a bridge way too far. What do you think? Well, of course. I mean, obviously, screwing around with the post office for one's own political benefit <laughs> is, is generally frowned upon. <laughs> um, and I will see if the country really, you know, is, is uh, if they fully absorb this and are, are a revolt over it, um, and I'm surprised businesses haven't really been more pissed off. You know, it is kind of essential to the economy. Especially now during <laughs> yeah, and, to peop- and, and to people's lives. Hello. You know, medicine yeah, people's lives, but, <laughs> comes through the mail well, now. Well, sure. I mean, there are a lot of essential things get shipped and not just letters to grandma. Um, no, I think it's, it's kind of, uh, well, it's unbelievable. Um, I don't know if he's going to get away with it and to what extent. Well, I don't know. So far, he seems to be able to get away with it. And I don't see a lot of Republicans doing anything uh, about it. It's holding up the the deal with people getting, you know, housing, you know, uh, security and and food on their tables and whatever in in the deal between the Republicans and the Democrats. And they go home. Hello. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, you know, August recess and... um, I don't know if they're going to get this uh, supplemental money from employment insurance that a lot of people have been getting and have been counting on. But it's not just uh, that; it's money for the post office as well. It, look, it's there are a trillion dollars apart now. Let you know, a trillion dollars. It's, you know, now we're talking, we're playing Monopoly, fake money. <laughs> you know, it might as well be a dollar. It, they're a dollar apart between fifty and and fifty on either side. That's it. That's where they are. They could come right to the center. Nancy Pelosi holding out is. Is is as craven, by the way, <laughs> as the Republicans not giving in because she's doing because she knows it's going to hurt Trump more than it's going to hurt her. You know, Democrats when people yeah, don't have a I mean, house. Got, yeah, I mean they've got some leverage. They should use it. I, I don't know if it's the worst thing for her to hold out. I agree, people get hurt in the meantime, but they're going to get hurt if they accept the lower Republican numbers anyway. Hmm. Um, hmm. I don't know. It's not a. It, hmm, that was good, Matt. I like that one. Good. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, well, well, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, um, I, I do think it's interesting, maybe they though. Maybe get to a deal. I, I don't know. Uh, he's, yeah, maybe he doesn't want a deal either, you know. Who, McConnell or he's, the president? The president. Why wouldn't he want McConnell, a deal? So he can turn it back. You think he's going to turn it around and say it's Nancy's fault? Well, sure. I but but Nancy's holding well. out for the numbers. That's the difference. They're holding out to keep the numbers lower, and she's holding out to help the people. I don't think he can win that argument. Well, I'm not saying he's a totally rational actor, <laughs> but I just think... <laughs> Thank his, you for reminding his idea, me. <laughs> his idea of looking tough may uh, compel him to 
um, become he is as obstinate so as, as she crazy, is. Matt. I, He's so I just friggin' crazy, Matt. You know, I don't know where they land on this. Yeah, well, um, I mean, you, in normal times with normal actors, this is the kind of thing where you can get to a deal because it's you know there are no great principles involved. They both agree on the aid. It's just the number. But these aren't normal times, and these aren't normal actors. So, yeah. so I, all right. So I want to go back to the post office on this, okay? Because I do think this is critical. I I think um, if he pulls that off, he is completely dismantled. He, he he's completely dismantled everything that is American. I mean, it's in the Constitution, you know, the post office. Um, I don't know how you respond to that. I don't know uh, whether people get so incensed by this that they get up and they further go out in the street. Nobody's going out much anyway because you know, everybody knows how bad things are. In about three weeks, it's going to be really bad because winter's coming to the northwest, <laughs> right, uh, in the northeast. Um, I, I, I just, I, I just want to reiterate how serious I think this thing is with the post office. And at some point, somebody uh, better make some noise about this from both parties, uh, because that's how bad I think this is. It, if he's able to pull it off, Matt, it's almost you could anybody can turn around and say this was an unfair election. Yeah, on a ma- on a massive scale. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, and I just don't know if the Republicans will do it if they'll get the pressure from their constituents in business enough that they'll um, be reluctant to do this. But for right now, they're just uh, they're totally complicit, as they usually are with him. Uh, to what avail? I'm not even sure. Lindsey Graham is down in the polls. It's like a, a you know, he's never been here. Uh, we talked about Mitch McConnell last week. It turns out that Mitch McConnell is you know, she's closing in on him now. Uh, where where some polls are tightening, as you and I talked about, would happen, uh, not by a whole whole hell of a lot. But in 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 you know governors' races, there the, the Republicans it's it just they're really stupid, aren't they? I mean, they're dumb. They're they're dumb. They're willing to throw themselves out in the party way for what? At this point. Yeah, at this point, I don't get That's, it. You yeah. know, I can see that there was a certain rationale to sticking with Trump during their primaries because, you know, crossing Trump during the primary is a dangerous thing. But now that we're out in the general, uh, you know, I don't really get it. Um, Have you ever seen anything like this? Not quite. There's usually some distancing from, you know, the nominee or the president uh, at this point. So they look like they're, you know... It had to turn some pretty solid defeat. Oh, my People God. Didn't, yeah, Democrats didn't really throw themselves at Walter Mondale, you know, or... Yeah. Um, I, I think that's... A, let's keep that on our radar for further discussion, because I think um, it's nonsensical as of this moment. I wonder how it's going to look in a week or two or three. I want to go to um, Trump today with the New York Post. Trump says he's going to win New York. And I say... Yeah, well. Not in a New York minute, but I find it interesting the Post put it on the cover. Hillary, by the way, just for you guys, won New York by 22. The other the other thing, very quickly, I just want to mention this because um, this goes in the theme of it all. Uh, Biden is losing with men. That's the only constituency that he's not winning on. Older men. Well, white men, yeah. Okay, white men. Um, Trump cannot just win with white men. Am I right? Not enough votes there. Because he's losing all the other constituencies. All right, I, I bring that up because you know he 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 did a he 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 did a call out to white old white men the other day with this Marjorie Taylor Greene who ran as a QAnon. I forget what state it was in Minnesota, maybe Georgia. Georgia, yeah. of course, Georgia. Why would I forget that? Um, and you know, heralded her. I mean, just oh my God, good stuff. QAnon, crazy lady. Anti-Semite, anti-everything. So here we go. You got anything on that one, or I just wanted to throw it out? because uh, Were you relating his supporting her to men? I didn't quite get the connection. Well, no, but, oh, the connection is that he's going to these white supremacist, anti, you know, um, uh, you know, anti-everything, anti, you know, anti, you know, Jew, anti this anti-black anti-whatever that's what they're that's what the what what her worth is to to trump the uglies yeah i don't know what he's gonna i mean i i think it's 
I don't know if he was doing it just to sort of, you know, support a Republican nominee or if it, he's taking an even darker turn into race and stuff. But, um, well, he's look, definitely doing I that, that, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, I mean, he's had this problem with, you know, uh, I mean, he's had this, he's done well with blue collar men. He continues to, but there's erosion there. And, um, you know, he's hurting a lot more with affluent men than better educated men. And so, um, look, he's, he's got a, he's got a big problem. He just doesn't have the constituency to, you know, put this all together, at least right now. Now, you know, things can change and, you know, the national polls are misleading because, you know, Biden and Harris run up the numbers in, you know, California and New York and other places and, you know, Trump may have more residual strength than other states, but he's he's um, he's he's way behind right now, and he's got he's got work to do. <sighs> okay, we move on. We move on to coronavirus. Um, here's where I want to talk about this week because every week it's another story out of Florida, but this this week in Florida it was pretty crazy, pretty crazy stuff. First of all, deliberately testing is down substantially. I think somebody told me it was up to 25% down, which is kind of an interesting thing. Don't test as Trump says, you don't get the results. So the numbers look like they're coming down, except that the deaths are going way up, right? Right. And um, the uh, um, uh, percentages are just off the charts and on, on every uh, magnet that you've got on your board. It's just, it's a mess. DeSantis now they're going to open the schools, right? Today, I think, is the... Uh, yeah, you're, you're governor down there. Yeah, good old DeSantis now. He he says, we got to open the schools because, um, you know, opening schools is like killing Osama bin Laden. If you can kill Osama bin Laden, you're going to open the schools. I mean, right? Yeah, didn't quite, didn't quite get that analogy. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. He's kind of... I'm beginning to think he's not well. Seriously, emotionally well. Um. There was a hearing yesterday, you know, the uh, uh, Leon County, Florida uh, judge held a hearing to decide if he's going to dismiss the Florida Teachers Union's lawsuit against uh, DeSantis seeking delay of school reopenings. By the way, this is the part I want you to hear, Matt, that is, this is a, oh, about kids going back to school, but the judge yeah. would only hold it via Zoom. He wanted right. no one in this courtroom. <laughs> yeah, that tells you what you need to know, right? So I don't know, we may be getting the results while we're recording right now, but I had to share that with you. I mean, how insane is all of this, right? This is like nuts city. Nuts. Absolutely nuts. You are listening to the Helly Caster Jane Show. The Helly Caster Jane Show posts new podcasts weekly at hellycasterjane.com and is available wherever you listen to your podcasts. Be sure to find us on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, on all your favorite apps. You can find the Helly Caster Jane Show on your Alexa device, too. Just say, the Helly Caster Jane Show. Oh, and come play with me on Twitter at the Helly CJ Show. So, so it's a mess down here, and, and, and it's, it's over the top, and they're covering it up. Uh, there was a document dump for five weeks, apparently, worth of deaths. <laughs> like, they held back. <laughs> so they waited to, it, they said it wouldn't, wouldn't reflect right because they had been closed for those three days during, you know, what was supposed to be the hurricane, and then they dumped it, and of course it sent things into the, the ozone anyway because it was so many. So the, the, we're being manipulated hell, and I don't talk to anybody down here who doesn't say, geez, this is really, this is, this is really ugly stuff. I am seeing Biden uh, Harris around here more than I ever saw. Democrats, you mean, uh, uh, bumper, stickers. bumper stickers and flags on my neighbor has a flag in the house, a neighbor who I don't even know. I took a walk the other day and there it was. I was excited. I'm getting a knock on her door. Sanjay, well, I'm glad you left the house. That's good. <laughs> I'm trying to walk. Sanjay uh, Gupta, he's having a fit. Right. Okay. The, right. The medical correspondent for on, CNN. Uh, CNN. Yeah. Doctor. Oh boy. I haven't watched. What's he? He's, he's accusing Trump czar. Well, yeah, he's, yes, his... he, he's from Georgia. He lives in Atlanta. He and, his, and he's got, you know, teenage girls. And he says, no, my girls are not going back to school. I waited to the last minute to make that decision, but I am not going to do that. It is just too crazy here in Georgia. No, we're not going to do that. 
He also this morning accused the Trump test czar of covering uh, for for POTUS, and um, that's bad. When Sanjay Gupta, who is one of the most measured people that there is, he's so laid back, you want to sometimes go, hey, can I stick a fire up here? You know what? No. He's the test czar. Uh, the tests are whoever is running the thing in the administration for the tests. I forget the guy's name. That's what, but he's called the tests are right. Is covering up for Trump who doesn't want tests done. So all over the country, it's not just Florida where they're not testing. I mean, you can, you can go all over the country. Uh, and, and that's one of the big concerns about, you know, these scientists, doctors who were going on air saying, you got to test. And also all of them are now starting to say, we need to shut down. And we need to clean this up. We've got about four weeks to right. clean it up. I mean, go back to the spring where people really had to stay inside. Yeah, no, they're, I'm, all of these scientists right now are, are, are doctors from major hospitals across the country are going, I'm, this is bad. We need to shut this down or we are not, or this is going to be worse than anything in 1918. Um, and are people wearing masks? Where yes. You are? Yes, they are. Most, yes. When, where they're not, they're getting thrown out. Yeah. So they yeah. are. So, so they're, well, that's good. I mean, that's, you know, as far as I could see, everybody's been wearing masks. I haven't been out that much, but um, it looks that way. Certain counties, this this county does have a mass ordinance, I think, um, at this point. Russia vaccine and the fact that one, three Americans <laughs> say they won't take a COVID vaccine, even if there is one. I just thought I'd throw that, throw that out. Well, you know, the Russians say they've got a vaccine. Um, I tend to doubt it. <laughs> I think they have a vaccine. They just they haven't tested it. Right, because we have. You know, we just haven't could tested be it. You know. <laughs> it could be wiper fluid. I don't know what it is. I find it hard to believe their pharmaceutical industry has surpassed everyone else's, but uh, so there's that. Uh, yeah, but you got a lot of Americans who say they want to take it. Now, you know, that's now. Let's see what it is in you know six months when there might be a vaccine to distribute. But there's no question you got a fairly big anti-vaxxer you know movement going on in this country yeah the thing going on but you know things may be desperate enough that people put that aside and just take the shot i don't i don't know how it how it looks when you're actually you know three six months from now yeah no i agree with you i think um i i think scary uh is i think real i think real scary is coming that's what i think i think we are out up for something that we have no clue what's coming. That's what I think. So you think you're right because you think um, not because of bad. I mean, it's going to get scarier because it mutates or because people just um, no because we, we no it's going to it's going to it's all right. Here's the deal: it's spreading like wildfire right now, like wildfire. So we know that, and the fact of the matter is, it's not contained, and you can't you you can contain it. And the thing that is at risk here is if they don't get it under control, not you can't kill it, Matt, without a vaccine, but you can control it. So, and if you know a surge is going to come because it's winter and people are going to be in their homes more and viruses spread more in winter and you don't have it under control, well, that's just pure stupid. So that's why they're all saying it. And since Florida has gone crazy in Texas and, you know, this state and that state, the doctors are saying we need to shut it down for four weeks. We'll be better prepared for what we know is coming in the next wave in the in the fall. It's, right. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I got you. Okay. I got you. Yeah. And and there's not a doc there's not a doctor who's not saying, let's do that. Yeah. Right? So there you go. Okay, now I'm gonna take you to some place that you don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. I'm going to talk about the White House correspondents and their complete mess up of how they're handling Trump in these uh, daily, they're not briefings anymore because all he does is the campaign rallies, uh, just letting him get away with saying just about anything. And I don't think there's, I, I, people are just enraged about this. I mean, every every l- damn left-wing anti-Trumper is just right. ready to kill. Until yesterday, right. who was S.U. Date? Date? Yeah. Date? Do you know him? Date. I don't know him personally, but I know him. I know his work, yeah. Well, isn't he a fascinating little creature? He had balls yesterday. 
He asked the president, how do you feel about all that lying? What was the line? Yeah, why do you lie all the time? Right. <laughs> it was a moment in history I will never forget. So what do you think of that? I, I mean, look, I think it's fine. It's what, um, it's true. You know, he is, uh, he is, you know, he is a liar. Um, <laughs> you think? I don't know if that, produ- you know, you want to produce interesting answers. And, you know, I thought Jonathan Swan had the right um, combination of sort of uh, toughness, but also getting him to relax at certain points. And, you know, I mean, as a, as a sort of like, line in the sand to say you're a liar that's you know that's good i mean i'm not down on him about it do you think but, that the press corps has been asking the right questions or follow-ups or or have been a little no. bit too so what's what's the deal with that why is that why are they doing that well they tend to go you know i haven't been in the white house press corps for a while but i mean they tend to go in there with lists of questions and their own questions and they're not very they're not very good at, you know, it's not like volleyball where they're sort of like, you know, setting someone else up for the shot or kind of playing like a team. Each of them is kind of acting as an individual actor. And the problem is that, you know, threads get lost and there aren't any really follow up. So, you know, it's, uh, it's not the most effective format. I've never seen it as bad as this, though. I guess that's my point. Yeah, well, I think it's designed for an era when a president might, you know, obfuscate, but not not just, you know, over lie with such with such gravity. Yeah. It's 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 bad. Um so yeah, I, I uh they gotta do a better job. And and maybe this guy opened it up that, that they're not so afraid um to to move in on him and, and uh do what needs to be done. Uh the press corps. Um it's embarrassing. Do I bring up Newsweek? And they're running that article by at Wacko? Yeah, well, we talked about the birther thing, but yeah, this is what gave it the, uh, gave it juice. Yeah, well, the Lucky's Week's been in a long, long fall. I, I quit there a couple of years ago because it was such a mess. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a heartbreak. It's a yeah, heartbreak. For, it's a heartbreak. Yeah, I just want to make that Matt did the right thing and when he saw this once revered, revered, uh, magazine going down the tubes. He wouldn't go down the tubes with them, and he took the stand and he walked. And I loved him before that, but I doubly loved him after that. Oh, you're very kind, but uh... but I also want to say this was really disgusting. They didn't name who he was. It, it, it you know, it, it, it they did it just to sell. Yeah, they didn't magazines. mention that he had run against Harris. Right, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, a little, a little like minor thing. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of a big deal. And then his argument was just it wasn't a real argument, and so no, the guy's a quack. Uh, no, the guy's a quack, and they've got a you know they got a really right wing opinion editor who you know just. Uh, it just it really no was bad, and I don't um, remember who it was who said, but it was somebody pretty high up who said, oh, Newsweek, it's still in business? I didn't know that. Now I know why I yeah, didn't I know people, that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what people think. I mean, it's just it's no no presence anymore, yeah, and it's yeah. a very different thing than a, than the you know, magazine that we knew. And it could have been. And that I worked at. Right, and it could have been so wonderful, but it isn't any longer. All right, the UAE deal, Abraham Accord. Um, yeah, big deal. See, and I don't think it's such a big so, deal. So you're our Mideast correspondent. What do you what No, do you think? I, the reason I don't think, if it had been the Saudis, I would have said big deal. <laughs> so, you know, um, it was a weird, it's a weird deal. It's a weird trade off. Uh, and, and it was, uh, it, 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 I just don't think it's all that big a deal. Like I said, it, there was already, com- you know, the UAE and, and, and Israel had been talking anyway. I mean, everything was fine, and it was behind right. closed doors. Okay, fine. So now they say it's you know in front of, um, you know, with the we, with the with with Netanyahu saying, uh, you know, I won't um, move into the to the West Bank. So it, it's dicey. It's weird. It's 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 kabuki, um, and I don't think the it's U.S. Your man, it's your man Netanyahu. Why aren't you uh, on board for this? Um, because. Um, uh, he's in an untenable position right now, and and uh, he, he, he because he's in the middle of a corruption trial and a pandemic. 
Yeah, I think that. And, and he's stuck with Trump. He's not stuck with Trump. He likes Trump. No, but he's stuck with Trump, even if he decided he wanted not to be li- like Trump anymore. He's stuck with they're Trump. Tight. They're buddies. I, I, no, I understand. Deal. No, no, no. I get that. I get that. But you can, you can pivot and manipulate and turn and, and adjust, at least BB could, in better ways all the way along. You know, he's getting old and he's getting tired and he's getting pressured. And I think, you know, I was never, I didn't like that Iran deal, as you know, but, but I don't think he should ever have aligned himself with Trump the way that he did. I never thought he should. And, you know, I, I, I understood why he did it at the time, but, you know, there was a price to pay and here it is. Um, so yeah, you know, the so world, the, price, the, the, didn't, the world didn't yawned it. Annex the West Bank. No, I, 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 I he, there were a lot of people who were protesting against BB, and that wasn't something that ever happened before. They didn't like him, maybe. But they're protesting because he's uh, corrupt and because there's a pandemic. They're not protesting. He actually did he a great job with that pandemic, with by the way. Me. Unlike Trump, BB did a great job with the pandemic. Their mistake was going back to school, well, which we have not on, learned. That's on him, too. Well, that's now on him. Yeah. But, but I'm saying up until they thought that they well, had a beat. Yeah, or I'm at sure least contained. Play, I'm sure Mrs. Lincoln enjoyed the play until the second. No, no, no. But, but you know, at least they had it under control, unlike this country that never had it under control. That's what I'm saying. We well, never, I don't think ever we had it under control here. Lose control after having control. I don't think but, that, I don't think anybody should beat him up, but, but the country I is, think he comes out better. I mean, look, he gets. What, from what? Wait, to mean from the deal? Yeah, I think the deal, look, I mean, the settlers are going to be pissed he didn't do the annexation. But... Well, those are his voters. <laughs> well, that's part of his voters. He's got other people who are... No, he doesn't have the left. Know. He's been losing the left more and more and more. That's what I'm trying to say to you. That The, the, the problem with this deal is that his right wing, which has been ho- you know, holding him up... Uh, they're they're not thrilled with this because you know they want that annexation. But any time uh, you know an Arab country or you know part of the world opens up to Israel, I think it's it's a big deal there. Um, I love uh, BB. Even, even if even if the UAE ties have been tacit until now, it's still a big deal. And I, okay. I don't see how he's not helped by this overall. Who BB? Yeah. Well, but, no, I think he's he, he no no, he's helped Frank. he's helped in the political world, not in the people world. Well, we'll see. I don't, you know. Listen, you could know be. I could could be. I'll give you a could be. I love BB, but he's tired and right. he's old and it's time for him to go. I'm just as shocked. Did you hear me? Like, yeah, I understand. I'm shocked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cuz you know, you've been all uh, all BB. I love BB. I want him yeah, to go I out. Want I want him to go out. No, I, w- I want him to go out with dignity and not being attached to a shit like Trump. Well, yeah, but your your Trump hatred and no, no, it's, it's not Trump hatred. It's not personal. No, I know it's not personal. It's not personal. It's well, just I don't I, like who the no, but <laughs> it's not. I promise. And it's okay if it's personal. It's, it's not personal. No, it's kids. not. It's just I. You know, I there were sir. I live by a certain set of rules. <laughs> And Trump doesn't live by the same rules that I live by. That's that's where I am on the deal. I mean, well, this is we'll for see, me. We'll a, see what happens. And I want well, I, and and BB always listen. They, they don't have any BB on anything real. They have BB on a bunch of crap. It's it's not like they. It's not like Trump where he's trying to break the you know the code of the Constitution or whatever. So that's not what we're talking about here. But you know. It's a mess. It's a mess. And I'm not, I'm not a two state solution person. So there's that too. I just don't think that that serves, um, Israel in the long run. I don't. I think there are other ways to go about it. So part of this is that. And the other one, like I said, is if they'd gotten Saudi Arabia in on the, that would have been a huge breakthrough. And this is, well, you know, one, one thing at a time. So by the same token, I also want to run by you the fact that they did finally Yesterday or today, this morning, seized an Iranian oil ship in the United States. Well, there's something they hadn't done before. So Trump's feeling emboldened, and here he goes. Here he goes. Here he goes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, and he may be thinking, going. Trump, it may be thinking, uh, uh, all of them thinking that that'll bring some Jewish American left-wing Jews to Trump 
for this. Uh, yeah, right, 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 right. And and the guy who pulled yeah, this together, to yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean the UA deal. I'm sorry, the Abraham. Oh, the UA deal. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, I'm just I'm just running by you. Um. All right. I'm 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 going to go to Jared Kushner, who supposedly worked on this deal, right? But he also has been talking with Kanye West every day. I mean, oh my God, Matt, it's so bizarre. Do you hear me? It's, yeah, I do. I mean, it's part ego trip, part Republican dirty trick. Um, it's, you know, it's a weird little, it's, it's a weird sideshow, but you know, if, if the race tightens, it's potentially, uh, um, effective. So Trump is a nut. Kanye West is nuts. And I'm beginning to think Jared Kushner is really nuts, but hey, not as nuts as Michael Cohn. <laughs> Oh my God! Disloyal. <laughs> the is name Michael of... Cohen nuts, or is he a truth teller? I don't know. I I think he's probably a little bit of both. I mean, he's a boy who lost his way. That's for sure. Uh, I'd be curious as to whether he's re- he can redeem himself through all of this. But last night he came out with his book cover and the title of the book, Disloyal, and the very first thing that he talks about are the P tapes, which apparently are real i almost peed in my pants matt (laughs) i'm sorry but i have to tell continuing with our urine theme um, (laughs) oh my god right i mean the book he 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 chimes in on all the most lurid stuff about trump and, and says it's true so and he he does he intimate that he wrote the book because he it's the only way to keep himself alive I mean, is that true? I hadn't seen that part, but that mean like he's going to get uh, bumped, Epstein'd, yes, in prison. Yeah, he's going to get killed if he doesn't put this out there. I've, I've been, I've been hearing that's why he did it. I don't it. know. Wouldn't this make it more likely? I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to kill somebody in plain sight these days. Um, but anyway, I, I, I just, uh, I, I, we're all looking forward to that one. But, but Trump, I'm sure is, and, and by the way, Michael Cohn said he participated in this little event that apparently took place in Las Vegas. Um, well, who, do they buy uh, stock and umbrellas? <laughs> um, Michelle Obama has a podcast. It's bad luck to open on umbrellas in the in in house. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. That depends. Yeah. It kind of defeats That the depends. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get it. I get it. I yeah, get yeah it. I let's get play it. it. Yeah, come on. <laughs> it's like, why not at this point? Um, this is the calm before the storm, by the way. <laughs> I'm telling you right now because next week it's going to be a little more quiet. Well, no, next week's the Democratic convention and the following week is the Republican. Is that how it goes? Yeah. Does, I guess it doesn't get quiet after this. Maybe this is the calm before the storm. No, we're coming down to the crunch of the election. <laughs> Can, you that, so. Can you wait? Can you wait? And as we come down to it, I just want, there was a little story. I, the two things. Michelle Obama has a podcast where she's talking about depression and menopause. <laughs> uh, right. She's uh, keeping it real. Yeah. Okay. I just thought I'd throw that out. Uh, there i don't know where i even wanted to go with that but just somehow i don't know yeah i want to get back to the time where everybody didn't air their dirty laundry <laughs> I do. I was... I don't quite call it dirty laundry in the sense of like scandal it's no no but but in the in the you well, know we've had first lay i mean you know i mean yeah. Barbara bush talked about depression um Oh yeah, and, and what's her name, Kitty? Uh, Betty Ford's. Out yeah, no, I get school, that. Uh, I just I, I, yeah, women do it, true. men don't. That's what annoys me. That's true. That's what yeah. annoys me. That's where I wanted to go with this. I, I just, well, they tend to do it after their husbands are out of office. Um, yeah, and I'm like, you know, come on, gals. But I, I don't see any. Da- I mean, you know, I'm sure it's helpful for people who are suffering to hear that, and you know, it is. It them. is, but you know, some things just don't change in the. And the women wars, they just don't. You know, women still hold this up and this up, you know, and everything else up. And it just, I don't know, you know. Um, I don't know. She's such a sort of, she's seen as such a strong figure. No, I, 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 yeah, I know. I just, you know, like I said, I'd rather Obama talk about his depression after getting out of the White House and having nothing real to do or something. You mean her husband, Barack Obama? Yeah, Obama. Barack Obama. Right. Barack. Barack. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, is that true? No. <laughs> I 
<laughs> not that I said. <laughs> well, then we definitely shouldn't talk about it if it's not true. No, I'm just, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know. No, I, I understand. I understand. Yeah, I know you understand. More women do this, but yeah, you know, and I, I just I, like stop. It's like that's too, too, too much information. I'm tired of it. Maybe that's just me. You know, I mean. Come on. I, I, I don't know. I think it serves. It serves I, a purpose. I, I, I know I'm, what you're I'm saying. I'm pro. I'm pro. Okay. I thought it was good. Thing. Okay. I'm tired of it all. Um, there's good discontent bubbling up. Here's a segue. <laughs> How I got to this one. I just, oh, God, help us all. Uh, with minority leader Kevin McCarthy. Did you see any of that in the news? It's just starting to bubble up now in, in on Republican uh uh, what, that they don't want him to yeah. be the leader anymore? Yeah, 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 yeah. So somebody's going to take well, the fall for all of this, and I, and McCarthy's as good as any, I suspect, but I just thought I'd throw that in there and just say, let, let's keep our eye on that story. He's, um, not, the, he's not the sharpest you think? drawer. You, know? you think? I remember he was on his way to being speaker until he sort of blurted that stuff out about the Benghazi committee. Yeah, and the Brighty's not. A few years ago. He he's just doesn't... Uh, no, I think they'll have a big leadership fight if this is a terrible election. Um, and I guess I guess the close on is on. Um, uh, oh my God, my brain just just completely shot to hell. Um, I had a close. Wait a second, maybe it's in my in my notes somewhere so I can remember what I wanted to talk to you about. It as the last. Thing. Oh yeah, this Durham probe. That's what I wanted to end on. Because Barr was on TV last night and he's making all sorts of threats about this is all about Russia, folks, and the you know right. I'm going to have some new information about how they wiretapped candidate Trump in 2016. So, do you think this is going to kill Biden's chances? No, me either. So, why is everybody carrying on about this? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I guess Republicans are still kind of obsessed with saying the Russia episode was all bullshit and that it's uh, the real scandal was you know Barack Obama investigating um, and I, I just don't think there's enough there and I just think we're in a different time it just feels like ancient history at this point I mean we're in such a different place yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. So the yeah, October surprise that's, did, oh like, my god you know. I mean even Ukraine doesn't have any resonance right now so I just can't imagine the conduct of the FBI four years ago is going to make a big deal. COVID, COVID, COVID. They can send the kids back to school. The economy can look better. People, yeah. Less people can go for um, unemployment right now. But you know what? Come October, come November. Yeah, I mean, the first beloved math teacher who dies, you know, or... It's over. The first time some six-year-old yeah. kid is on a ventilator, I mean, they're going to... Yeah. <laughs> That, that'll be the end of it. Anything? I mean, we'll see if that happens. Can I we end on a nice it. note, a happy note? Yeah, let's go with a nice note. Tell me. <laughs> oh, you want me to come up with a nice note? Well, they're playing sports again. That's good. Uh, yes, and my Yankees are doing great. Yeah, so that's kind of nice to have that yeah. back in its weird, limited form, but still. There it is. I mean, it's a little semblance of normal life, so that's good. Take me out to the ball game. Yeah, there you go. So a little, little bit of that is good. Talk to you next week. All right. Talk to you. Talk to you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Helicaster Jane Show, a production of Resec LLC. The Helicaster Jane Show posts new podcasts Wednesdays, 3 p.m. Eastern, and is available at HelicasterJane.com and on all your favorite apps. Be sure to visit us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and follow me on Twitter at The Halle CJ Show. Until next time, this is Helicaster Jane. <laughs>